So let's pray. Father, as we gather before you to worship you and to give you glory and honour and praise, we also know that we need to come before you with a penitent heart. And we're sorry for those times this last week that we've let you down. And in a moment of quietness, we bring to mind some of those words or thoughts or actions that we now regret. Father, we're sorry and we ask for your forgiveness. But Lord, we also ask and pray that in the power of your spirit, you might shape us and mould us to be more like the people that you call us to be. And finally, Father, we want to thank you. Thank you that we can know you and be known by you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who by his life has helped us to understand more of you. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that renews and refreshes and guides us. We thank you for your holy word, the Bible, that challenges us and encourages us. And we thank you for the church and for the love and the fellowship that we share together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Father, for all these things. And now as we Hear the words of scriptures read to us, Lord. We ask that your written word would become a living word in our hearts and our lives. And we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Yvonne is going to read to us from Matthew's Gospel. Today's reading is from Matthew 4, verses 18 to 22. Jesus calls his first disciples. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus calls them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Here endeth the lesson. Thank you, God. I will make you fishers of men is perhaps one of the best well-known sayings of Jesus. Another well-known saying, and I think this was Bill Shankly that said, some people believe that football is a question of life and death. And I'm very disappointed with that attitude because I can assure you it's much, much more important than that. Well, some people might say that mission and discipleship are a matter of life and death in the Methodist Church and, in fact, for the Methodist denomination in the UK. And they might be right, but actually I would say that they are much, much more important than that. After all, it's God's mission that is at stake, not the survival of Methodism. And God's mission doesn't depend on any particular denomination, Methodist or otherwise. And it's God's mission. And Christians of all flavours are invited to be a part of it. 
And I believe that those two words, discipleship and mission, increasingly will be on the agenda of the church in the UK and also Yatton Methodist Church specifically. And if we think of the key values that we here at Yatton Methodist Church aspire to, they're part of our mission statement. They include faith as a journey, which really is about discipleship and that journey of growing in our faith. Also, being mission-hearted is one of our cultural values. And again, mission, we want that to be at the heart of all that we do as a church. So we're already acknowledging their importance in the life of the church and for being part of a healthy, growing church. Martin Atkins, who was previously the General Secretary of the Methodist Church, encouraged the Methodist denomination at the time when he was in office around 10 years ago to see ourselves as a discipleship movement shaped for mission. A discipleship movement shaped for mission. Discipleship and mission, that virtuous circle which is reflected in our reading today when Jesus spoke of sending out disciples who would be fishers of people. Jesus making disciples who would be people that then made disciples, who would make disciples. And so that remains a priority for the church today. We want to be about making disciples who make disciples. The way the church has responded in the last couple of years and continues to respond to what's been happening around us means that some things in the life of the church have changed. Some of the ways we do things, some of our methods have changed and will continue to change. For example, our morning worship services, now they're available at different times and in different ways. So you could maybe receive them by paper, or maybe they're available online through YouTube, or you could visit the building at certain times on a Sunday morning. But it's not just come to church on a Sunday morning to the building. And that's good. That's good. But those changes to the methods and the ways that we're doing things have not changed those values that we hold to be important, like mission and like discipleship. They will remain at the heart of our priorities, even though the way we do things might change. Kerry Newhoff is a, a blogger and commentator on the church today, and he recently blogged that it would be wrong for the church to assume that we can just go back to doing things the way that we used to do them prior to COVID and expect them to have the same results. He also pointed out that our buildings might become less important as we focus more on people and on relationships and recognise that more can be done and maybe should be done outside of the walls of the building. And of course, that's likely to be a challenge to many of us. Stepping out of the comfort zone of what we're used to, looking to do things differently, to be more creative, that isn't necessarily going to be easy. And the truth, truth is that we often feel inadequate and have a lack of confidence when it comes to finding ourselves in new and different situations. But the good news is that God is pleased to partner with those who feel insecure and inadequate and lacking in confidence. And just look at these fishermen that Jesus encouraged to join him in his mission. Ordinary folk, not especially qualified for the period ahead of them, following Jesus around as his disciples. 
And we can see what a motley crew they were if we just flick ahead in the Gospels and read ahead to some of the things they got up to. Arguing amongst themselves about who was the greatest of Jesus' followers. Peter denying that he was a supporter of Jesus, just when Jesus needed him most. And Peter's lack of faith when Jesus encouraged him to step out of the boat and walk on water. And so many examples of the, the disciples just completely failing to understand the nature of Jesus' mission and his purpose in going to the cross. And then perhaps we look at our own lives with our relationships, our finances, our lack of faith, the quality of our decision making and our judgments and our priorities. And so often we feel that our own lives would not stand up to scrutiny. But you know, God believes in us. He knows our weaknesses and our frailties and he still calls us to follow him, to serve him and to play our part in growing his kingdom here on earth. The fact remains that God is on a mission and he calls us to join him in making disciples who will make disciples and maybe in this next season of the life of the church, things are going to be a bit different and more changeable than perhaps they've been in the past. And maybe we'll find ourselves being stretched into new areas of ministry and stepping out into new places, doing things differently. But I, for one, I'm confident that we can rise to the challenge. I can, I'm confident that we can follow the one who calls us to follow him, to join us on his mission of making disciples who in turn will make disciples, responding to God's call, playing our part in his mission to save the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you call us to serve you and to follow you and to share in your work. And that you're not asking for certain abilities. You just want our availability. Thank you for the opportunities for service in your name. Lord, take us. Help us to make a difference for you and to be encouraged as we see you at work in people's lives, transforming, bringing renewal and new life. So as we offer ourselves, use us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to continue in our worship with the song, Will You Come and Follow Me If I But Call Your Name? <laughs> 